it's always a simp sympathizer. Always one woman in the group that has to go back and tell all the men what the women say so that they can feel good about themselves. I did not think it was going to be Alexis, but you know what? Here we are. At first I was like, from the previews last week, I said, oh God, coach, she going off on somebody. She cussing them out for no reason and all this other stuff carrying on. But after watching this episode, I said, you know what? I see why she going off on Alexis. Girl, what are you talking about? Basically, she made it seem like Koshia is at fault for Will being inappropriate and making her feel uncomfortable. I said, girl, that's what? Girl, what? Oh, <laughs> girl, no, girl. It's a no for me, dog. Anyway, hey, y'all. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle. This is the Belle perspective and today i am here to talk about ready to love this is season nine episode three getting intimate if you're new to my channel i talk about reality tv books movies all sorts of things on this channel so peruse check out some of my content and subscribe if you're interested for those people that are coming back hey welcome back you already know the drill okay get down in the comments let me know what you think about the episode and don't forget to like this video before you leave let's get into the review so the ladies have the power and they're all meeting at Tommy, Tommy for the first meeting with Tommy for the first time at their lounge. And Rashina looked so cute. She had on like this orange, she had on orange heels with this like floral jumpsuit. It was so freaking cute. I was like, come on now. It looks good. And she had the platinum blonde hair to go with it. It looked really good. I like what she had on. The All the girls looked really good, but I thought Rashina's outfit stuck out the best to me. So Tommy has implored them to explore intimacy and they're kind of like, boy, what? Okay, because immediately people always think that intimacy is always tied to sex, but intimacy doesn't necessarily have to be sex. There are so many other ways to be intimate with someone without being sexual. So Tommy is telling them to explore intimacy, right? Not sex, but explore, you know, being vulnerable and opening up and showing people, show the, showing these men who you truly are and what you like, okay? And you want to go on dates that are important to you. Show them if you are a track star, take them down to the track and field place. Like, you know what I mean? Like show them pieces of who you are. And I thought that was good instruction. So they're also introducing a new man named Justin and I'm not gonna lie, Justin is a handsome man. Thank God they didn't slack on looks this time. But I still, I got my good eye on Justin like I got my good eye on Jonathan now. I don't even, child, none of these men, girl. Throw them all away, girl. Hey, at this point, I'm just looking at, I'm side-eyeing Justin. I'm side-eyeing Jonathan. I'm side-eyeing all of, all of them, okay? All of them. So we first have the first date, okay? Um, I wrote in my notes, another F-boy on the roster, child. Okay, so I wrote in my notes, we have, um, oh, I'm sorry, the first date. We've got Rashina, Lamar, Will, William, and Alexis. Alexis brings the folks to a basketball court, indoor basketball court, because she's a referee as well. And she wanted to show them what she does in her off time as a basketball ref, right? As soon as Lamar pulled Rashina's, I just, as soon as Lamar walked in, I was just like, uh, 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 he makes my skin crawl. I am so glad that they have cameras around because the way that he just, like, I do not feel safe and I'm not even there, and but I do not feel safe with him at all. So they play a pickup game, I think is uh, maybe 21 or something like that. I don't know, child, I'm not best. I don't play basketball like that. They play the game. William and Rashina win, and that William is the tall one. They actually win. Listen, William got some hoops, child. He he got okay, and they start to split off to talk to each other a little bit more. Rashina pulls Lamar and Will aside. I said, "Ugh, she pulled the two perverts aside. Yuck. Ugh, just please, camera stay. Okay, let let the camera stay. Y'all watch this. Okay." Then I think it was Will that asked, Lam yeah, Will was like, okay, so which guy would you choose? And Rashina was like, none of y'all, okay? And I said, I know that's right. Because the two of y'all are not being for real. Y'all are very immature. You're making sexual jokes. You're being inappropriate. Like who wants to, yes, we're grown, but there are limits still. Anyway, so um, what is her name? Oh, Alexis, my bad. Alexis is pull, has pulled Will and Lamar aside as well and has asked them, you know, what does intimacy look for you, look like for you? Now, when I heard Will's answer, 
I know most people are going to be like, yeah, that was a good answer. Yeah, that was a good answer. But I honestly don't feel like that was a real true answer either. I feel like he gave her what he thought she wanted to hear. He told her that intimacy first starts with his relationship with God, you know, spending time with God first. And then, then I can reach out and try to be, you know, have a, a, a relationship with a chick. I said, when you say chick, when you say girl, I know automatically right then and there that you a child and I don't have time for you. I said, Will, you just saying whatever you think Alexis want to hear, okay? Lamar then takes it a notch further into creepy land. He says, you know, it's intimate. It's physical. You know, I, I want to see what kind of draw, what kind of draws you got on. It's sex. It's... <sighs> I'm so tired of these grown ass men not being able to relate to women outside of getting into their draws. Just say that. Just say that I'm emotionally wounded and I have no other way to relate to a woman other than trying to have sex with her. That literally is what it is, okay? And I'm sick of this shit and I don't understand why the fuck he got past goddamn production because this nigga is creepy as hell, okay? We moving on. Justin and uh, Rashina. Is her name Rashina? Yeah, Rashina. Justin is really cute, y'all. They go on a dog date. Both of them like um, dogs. They have fur babies. And we see that the dogs are a little bit more of a distraction than he thought they, He thought it was. He thought it was going to be. Justin was real nervous. You could tell. He pulls up. And, you know, he, he's smooth. You know, he's from Mississippi. He's 34. He is a PE teacher. And I was just like, okay. Nothing wrong with being a PE teacher. But I saw the pictures that he posted on Instagram. And I was just like, mm, there's some thirst traps. And I don't know about that. But anyway. He says that he is, you know, wanting to find a woman that um, can he can give his heart to, basically. And Rashina asks him about if he has children, you know, if he's ever been married, et cetera, et cetera. He tells Rashina that he doesn't have any kids and that he's satisfied with not having any kids at this juncture. She also asks him about her age and the age gap that they have. I think Rashina might be like 41, 42. I forgot how old she is. He's 34. So she might be about seven, eight years older than him. He says he's fine with that as well. My thing is, yes, he's saying all this now, but let's see what his actions say when he starts to meet all the other women, okay? It is refreshing to hear a man say that whether he has kids or whether he doesn't have kids, he'd be fine because most of these knucklehead ass niggas be like, I need to carry my legacy. I need to carry on my legacy. Not fucking knowing that legacy ain't got a goddamn thing about kids. It ain't got shit to do with no damn kids, but child <laughs> they just want to excuse the nut in somebody child anyway we moving on all right so lay ellen is her name lay ellen i do i feel like i fuck her name up every time i feel like i get her name wrong every time i see lay ellen lay Lynn, i don't know what her name is my bad but baby when she walked up in there with that blue dress to go meet with tommy i said yes mama yes baby she looked amazing okay she pulls tommy aside she wants to talk to him she says she's got a personal family matter going on now my nosy ass was like girl well what's going on girl <laughs> what's going on we want to know girl she doesn't say she just says it's a personal family matter and it's being overwhelming and she's having a hard time focusing on the process plus trying to make sure that she handles and does everything that she needs to do for this particular family emergency so tommy says i'll give you a week off you know i know you don't want to leave the process you keep me posted and jump back in when you're ready okay i knew then i was like oh no she ain't gonna stay but you know anyway we later do find on find out that she decides that she's gonna exit the process but you know you gotta do what's best for you so we meet at Chaz's house. So it's a group of folks. It's Chaz, it's Patrice, Alonzo, Koshia, Vanessa, and Justin, the new guy. Now, Patrice invites Justin. She was like, yeah, I invited Justin. I did. I was like, I know that's right. I know that's right. Cause of chaos and confusion. <laughs> I know that's right. Shake this shit up a little bit, okay? So Koshia and Alonzo sit down. Alonzo apologizes to her, but he offered a raggedy ass apology. You know, I'm sorry if I offended you. Nigga, you knew she offended you offended her. Just say I'm sorry I I offended you. I and and still again, your ass does not know how to relate to a woman outside of trying to get in her pants. It is so remedial. It is so immature. It is so emotionally deficient i cannot i cannot anyway y'all i'm not gonna go off on i'm not gonna do it i ain't gonna do it okay 
Um, it seemed like it was a fun event. Nobody was cussing each other out. There wasn't no crazy stuff going on. It looked like it was real fun. So as the people started packing up and leaving, Chaz and Vanessa have an opportunity to get together and get a little bit cozy. And I was like, okay, this is cute. This is cute. Now, my only problem in this scenario, and it has nothing to do with either of them. It's just, I keep thinking, look at this wonderful opportunity for Chaz and Vanessa to get together and talk to each other. Why in the hell do they have to eliminate people? I really don't think that elimination should happen on this show. I think people should have an opportunity because we have this rare occasion where every woman likes an individual man. So you mean to tell me that as as you start voting all these people off, the woman that the one the woman or the man that each person has a connection with will literally be gone. So that person is going to be forced to try to go make a connection to some with someone else, and that's not even realistic. Anyway, again, let me get out my soapbox. But I when I saw Chaz and Vanessa, I said that's a damn shame because they asked is somebody going to get voted off here, and this was an opportunity for the two of them to actually ride off into the sunset. But we here for a game show and not actually connecting black folks. But anyway, I got an issue with that. We moving on. We get Maya and Lamar. Again, I was like, praise God that there are cameras. Mr. Cameraman, please don't go nowhere. Uh, can Everybody, please stay on set. Lamar get in here and we don't know what the fuck he finna say or do, child. We don't know. And I don't have time, okay? So Maya invited Lamar so that she can show herself a little bit to him. She has a waist trainer line and she also has, I guess, some athleisure clothes or something like that. And he come in there being a fucking creep per usual. He asked her weird ass questions about, you know, he, you ha sex has to be involved. You know, it has to be physical. He started asking her about the freakiest thing she did in high school. Nigga, high school, nigga. You mean 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds, nigga? You trying to find out what she was doing when she was a teenager? I said, oh no, wrap this shit up right now. I don't have time. Then he asked her about her virginity at prom oh bitch bye okay uh-uh bye <laughs> just like she said she said okay i'm gonna wrap this up now disgusting anyway later on maya pulls brings out jonathan Lauren, and mika now at first jonathan was somebody that i was like okay i like jonathan he seems like he's an okay dude but i'm looking at jonathan like child all these niggas some fuck boys on this goddamn roster child they all could go home quiet as a skip okay so they are all talking, kind of shooting a breeze, laughing a little bit with Laron because they all know him as the party boy. He was like, no, you know, when I get married, I want to, you know, grill out back, have my my kids, friends come over and we invite the neighbors. So he's just he's just an entertainer. He likes entertaining people. That's what he likes. And he's an he seems like an extrovert and that he needs to be around people in order to kind of like thrive. So he was already talking about shots. I was like, now that's my type of dude. That's my kind of dude dude now i'll party with you but i ain't finna marry your ass because i ain't got time for all that shit y'all no uh -uh -uh. i gotta be in the house at least by eight o'clock i'm tired anyway <laughs> so mika pulls jonathan aside to talk to him about the situation with the, the whole wife thing right so prior to after they you know joke around with Laurent, i think maya mentioned something about his ex-wife and you could see jonathan looking like oh shit i ain't never tell her i had an ex-wife i said yeah, Jonathan, you should have, the way that you told everybody else that you had an ex-wife, you should have told Mika that. And he said he didn't tell her because he wanted to protect himself. I said, ah, oh, no, no, nigga, no, no, nigga, no. You knew Mika wasn't going to fuck with you if you had an ex-wife. You knew she was going to start asking questions and try to get in the business and find out. So you, oh, you omitted, purposely omitted that information specifically for her because you knew her guard was going to be up if she found out you had a wife and that shit backfired on you. Cause I, when Mia said, Maya, Mia, when Maya said your ex-wife, he looked like, oh shit. Y'all saw that in her, his face. He immediately was like, oh shit. Mika don't know nothing about that. I said, oh nigga, you's a lie. He can go. Okay. Laurent and Maya talk. And, uh, one thing about the show that I like to do, I try to like watch it without audio so I can look at the body language and get an idea of who is who and what is what. I invite y'all to do it because it's a good it's a good exercise. Obviously, watch it with the audio, but then go back and watch it, or maybe watch it with no body language or with no audio, and then go back and watch it with audio. It's interesting. It's interesting. The show takes on a different. Um, you get a little bit more of uh, insight when you watch it with no audio. But anyway, so Laron and Maya are sitting there talking. Laron all up in her grill, and Maya got her body turned halfway. 
not i mean she looking at him she making eye contact but not really it was still very uncomfortable energy like uh i need this thing to back up a little bit i don't know if i it, did y'all see that because when i turned when i turned off the audio and watched it again i was like yeah she's not really feeling him like that she talking she entertaining him but i don't really think she feeling him like that i i didn't i didn't see that but y'all correct me if i'm wrong okay so we get to deliberations the ladies meet Layellen. Yeah, I don't know what her name is. I'm so I fucked that up so badly. Late Lay, Ellen, um, she decides that she's gonna leave the process. All the girls are like, "Oh, girl, bye, girl, bye, girl." Okay, and then Tommy asks all the women, "Who are they liking?" And again, the girls like different guys. Every one of these women likes somebody totally different, and they literally all could find someone on this show if you just give them the opportunity to do that. Okay, and it pisses me off that they 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 won't let it happen. So anyway. The niggas that's on the bottom, okay? Lamar, Jonathan, and Will. Quiet as it's kept, all three of their asses need to go home if you ask me, but okay. Patrice shares a story about how she was talking to Will, and Will said that he was staging, a, left his apartment, was staging in the house, and was finna lay down on the floor and sleep in the house. I said, nigga, what? What kind of house that you got? First of all, my realtors get in the, in the comments. If you're a realtor, give me the heads up. Now, I understand y'all stage the house, Okay, I understand a lot of realtors stage the house. I also understand that a lot of realtors hire a vendor to stage the house. So I do know that that does happen, okay? But leaving your own home to have to stage the house and sleep over at that house? Uh, some don't sound right to me. Sound like your ass ain't got no damn furniture, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Y'all get in the comments, tell me what's what what's what, the what and what, because I'm I was confused. Okay. So then Koshia also tags in on the Will situation where she felt like Will just made her feel uncomfortable. And you know, through the process, she just didn't feel like he 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 connects with her. Okay. Then she shares that Alexis has shared with Will parts of the conversation that they had at the mixer and alexis was like you know i didn't share anything with him i just told i just you know you guys you're, you're always saying that these men are being disrespectful to you these men are coming at you sexual girl cause she was like girl it's not my fault you built like a 12 year old bitch I said, oh, no, y'all, oh, no, Koshia, girl, no, don't do that, girl, don't do that, don't do that, we don't need to body shame nobody up in here, oh, God, I, my face would have been like, oh, 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 I would have been so, oh, girl, no, God, anyway, so, they're going back and forth and Alexis is saying, well, it, if you're the one that's always saying that all these men are coming at you sexually, they know not to try me like that. So what is it that you putting out? You must be, you trying to holler at these men. You must be trying to do something. That's the reason why they are coming at you wrong. And it's, that's the reason why they are approaching you wrong. I said, Alexis, Alexis, girl, are you serious? Are you blaming this girl for these niggas being raggedy and inappropriate? Are you fucking kidding me? I, girl, for real? Like, Girl, ne never in a million years would I ever blame a woman. Never in a million years would I ever blame a woman for the actions of a grown ass man. Like, girl, what are you talking about? Girl, are you fucking kidding me? I said, oh, girl, okay, Alexis. And then Koshia says, now if I slap this bitch in the mouth, you know, I'm she gonna have a problem. I said, now Koshia, again, you don't, you don't gotta put your hands on nobody. You don't gotta put your hands on nobody, okay? But I was very much, very much shocked at the fact that Alexis was low-key trying to blame Koshia, quiet as she kept, she got her name wrong on purpose, called her Koisha. Bitch, did I call her Koisha too? <laughs> I feel like I fucked around and called her Koisha at some point too. My bad, girl. My bad, my bad. Anyway, but yeah, girl, why are you blaming the woman? Girl, what? Alexis, huh? I, I, girl, no, girl. Anyway, so Will and Lamar down at the bottom, uh Alexis takes out Will. Lamar is out with Koshia. When Alexis shares the story about the whole sleeping on the floor, you can see in Will's face. I'm telling you, if you watch that thing with no volume, it is so funny. Oh my God. Will was making all these faces, and then he is saying his body language is like, I can't believe these. I cannot believe what the fuck. Like he was mad, real childish, salty, right? Alexis tells him that he is still ready to love and that he's in the still in the game show. But Will in the confessional says that he's, you know, this is war. You know, this is I can't I can't deal with no women who have bad energy and all this other stuff. I said, now, sir, why the fuck would you want to stay on the same game show if you don't like none of these women? If you're trying to be at war with them, what the fuck you doing here? You need to take your ass home because the show is called Ready to Love, not Ready for war 
Child, I, don't, I said, oh, God, he need to go home. Do y'all not see this? He is not handling this very well. He's not trying to take any of the of the advice that Alexis is giving him. <sighs> okay? I try Anyway. Koshia basically tells Lamar that he need to go take his ass home because he ain't ready to love. As Koshia was trying to let him down easy, Lamar was like, stop talking to me like that. Basically, he was trying to accuse her of patronizing him. And don't get me wrong, now her voice, her tone might have been a little bit different. But I feel like she was trying to take it easy on your ass. She could have just went off on you like she be going off on everybody motherfucking else. So I, I said, Lamar, you you got the best of her because quiet as is kept, child. Alexis was getting the worst of her <laughs> maybe an hour or two ago, sir. Anyway, she walks off. You know, Lamar's salty. He cutting her off, acting a donkey, child. What else would you expect from his raggedy, immature, grown-ass, oversized, unable to relate to women except for sleeping with them ass? Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know if y'all think I'm wrong or right. Okay, let me know. Sound off in the comments. Y'all know I love to hear what y'all have to say. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like this video before you leave. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.